Did you know that there are seven major league fishing tournaments in a given year? Now, I'm, now I know a majority of you have fished before, but for those of you who don't, I will give you a quick history of fishing, how to tie different knots, different fishing techniques, and where to use them, and how to rig two different types of rods. I feel like I'm pretty credible to give this speech because I've been fishing, like most of you, since I was pretty young, and my grandpa is one of the leading experts in my book, along with a few other ones, with Roland Martin, who is, he is the most decorated bass fisherman of all time, and Kevin Van Dam, he is a pro in casting crankbaits, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so once again, I'll be explaining history of fishing, different types of knots, different techniques, where to use them, and how to rig two different types of rods. So firstly, I'll be explaining the history of fishing uh, and the different rods that you would use for different species. Fishing has dramatically changed since it was first introduced over 40,000 years ago. Fishing lures have also been pretty changed over time. At first, they were just pieces of animal bone or bronze. Then they became uh, more advanced and became made of wood with steel hooks like this one here. Uh, and eventually became made of plastic with steel or tungsten hooks, which would be like this one here. Rods have also evolved from the time they were first introduced. They used to be pieces of flexible wood, or like, you know, and now they have become like stiff, yet flex still flexible pieces of uh, carbon fiber, graphite, or fiberglass. Now I'm gonna show you different rod types while targeting different species of fish. If fishing for panfish, I usually use like this one here, this is an ultralight rod, which is very small circumference of the rod, or a light one, which is about this thickness usually, uh, with four to six pound line. And uh, usually I would use actually like flies or small hooks with crawlers on them. Uh, for bigger fish, such as bass, walleye, and small pike, you want to use a medium or medium heavy. For that, I sometimes will use this one, or I'll usually use this one. This is actually a medium heavy, I think, the heavy rod type. And then for like bigger fat, bigger fish, such as big bass, walleye, or wait. And then you, for those ones, you're going to use 8 to 12 pound braid or line of filament. I'll explain the difference between the two in a bit. Um, if fishing or trolling for big pike, muskie, carp, gar, or catfish, you want to use, most definitely will need a heavy rod, which is, I think, just a bit thicker than this, uh, with 25 to 80 pound braided monofilament or fluorocarbon line. Most of the time I'll use the medium heavy with 12 pound mono because I feel like that is a pretty good all around rod and line. So the difference between monofilament, fluorocarbon, and braided is, so mono is stretchy, it like sinks. Fluorocarbon is like mono, but it's like less stretchy and it sinks. Braided floats and like has like almost no stretch. So it's pretty good for forcing the fish out of like the weeds and stuff. I'm gonna demonstrate the knots later once I use the once I rig the rods. So now that I've shown you those, I'll show you different techniques. So there are thousands of techniques that people that work well in different situations. Every professional has their own opinion of the best technique. Um, one scenario that I find myself fishing pretty often is. Uh, an overcast day with slightly gusty winds and a declining slope at about 8 feet down to 12 feet. For this scenario, I use a few options. Uh, one of them would be the medium diving crankbait, the Rapala DT6. This is somewhat bright for cloudy overcast days, so it wouldn't be exactly the ideal option you'd want to use. Um, and if there, and so that'd be a drawback for that scenario. Um, and I also recommend slightly darker lures such as this black and orange reed runner. Now I love using these spinner baits. These are like, that's like one of my go-to for some more pike that are hiding around in the weeds. And if you want to fish weeds, you would most likely, for like top water, pike, they love to bite these things. It makes them go nuts. 
And then if you're fishing for bass in the you know kind of offshore around structures, I'll usually use chatterbait. So this is a Z-Man chatterbait with a Mr. Twister curly tail grub. You want to have kind of like offsetting colors so that it'll catch their attention. And this leader is made of fluorocarbon. You can kind of see how it's like stiff but no stretch. Uh, and now I will show you how to rig a spin cast rod, which is this type of reel here, and then the bait cast, which is this one. So I'll start with the bait caster. I've already there's already line spooled on here because it's gonna take me a bit to take me way too long to actually spool line. First you want to get enough line out and then there's a little hole right here in the front that'll move it back and forth. Put it on there. This part is kind of tricky, especially with monofilament because I, I prefer using braided on them because it just works better. And then what you want to do is run it through all the eyes of the rod, which are these little holes here. And actually, when you're using a bait caster, the smaller holes, so you can see how these eyes are kind of smaller compared to like these ones. So that's actually used for bait casting are these smaller holes because it'll keep it tighter to the rod, which is way better for when you're spooling it, reeling it in so you don't get uh, bird's nest a lot of the times with that. And then I'm gonna show you now for knots. Um, I only know a few, but one of my favorite knots to use when doing with this one is the poly knot, I believe it's called. So basically you would make a loop and then you would like feed it through the eye of the lure like this. And then you'd have a loop, you'd take it around the line leading, leading into the rod and then you loop it back in just like a knot like that and then you put the lure right through here which will and then like after you put the knot around the lure it'll connect back up to this main line which will actually give it back will loop it straight to the line and then normally for cutting off the excess line I'll have scissors but for today I brought fingernail clippers because these actually do work pretty well especially when I'm ice fishing because I don't want to bring a whole ton of them with so that's how you would tie that on there real quick and then now I don't think I mentioned this before but bait casters are usually used for more advanced fishermen because they're kind of hard to use and now for the spin cast rod so So, you know, see how it's like, so you flip the bale open, take it through like that. You want to keep the bale open while you're lining it, just because it'll, you know, go back. And you want to run it through all the eyes and then close the bale and then tie your lure on. So, there are a few things that you should, those were a few of the things that you should know for fishing. Um, I have shown you how to apply knots, fishing techniques, when and where to use them, and how to rig a fishing rod. So in conclusion, fishing is a fun sport for all, and you should totally become invested in this fun sport. Thank you for listening to my speech.